Hi, and welcome to the Pool Guy Podcast Show. In this episode, I'm going to touch on the question and try to answer for you. And the question is, should you upgrade the salt in 2022 in lieu of the chemical shortage and the fact that maybe you've been thinking about upgrading the salt for a while or a saltwater pool or a saltwater generator, I should say. And is this a time to upgrade to a saltwater generator or saltwater pool? Pool Service Pro, open a Leslie's Wholesale account today and receive wholesale pricing on products you use every day. Leslie's Pool Supply offers convenient locations that are open seven days a week. Another great benefit of opening a Leslie's Wholesale account is Leslie's referral program. Get referred to a customer looking for weekly pool service. Also receive priority service, enhanced rebate programs, a discount on your general liability insurance through SPA, a discount on your pool riding software through Skimmer, and an opportunity to co-brand with Leslie's on your social media, website, truck, and more. Save time and money and grow your pool service route and become a Leslie's Pro. And I think the reason why I kind of jumbled that intro is that it's kind of hard nowadays because everyone's referring to a saltwater pool differently. I think in the in the past we would just say saltwater pool as an industry-wide indicator that there's a saltwater generator on there. But now I think a lot of refining is being done. And you'll hear salt systems referred to as chlorine generators or saltwater generators still is something that's out there or a salt system or salt water system. And basically it's just a pool that has been converted in some ways to a salt water pool, quote unquote, with a salt water generator or chlorine generator that's producing the chlorine for the pool. That's basically what a salt water generator does. It takes a salt and it goes to a somewhat complicated chemical process into a chlorine gas form and it's returned into the return lines into the pool. It's kind of how they make liquid chlorine. They use a similar process but on a larger scale to make liquid chlorine. So a lot of times I'll refer to the amount that a saltwater generator produces and I'll use liquid chlorine as kind of my baseline because it's a similar process. It's probably not accurate scientifically because you know they measure the chlorine by pounds when they generate, when the manufacturers put how much chlorine it can generate. But I think visually, if you look at, you know, how much per, how much one pound of chlorine generated in a pool is equal to liquid chlorine, you kind of get the idea. And so I kind of generalize it by saying one pound of chlorine made by the saltwater generators is about one gallon of liquid chlorine to pour into your pool each day. So if your generator is making one pound of chlorine, it's like you pouring one gallon of 12.5% liquid chlorine into your pool every day. And so with that out of the way, here's the question that I get asked all the time. And this one's becoming more and more prevalent as we have the chemical shortage from 2021. And we're moving into 2022 with really high prices for chemicals. Not sure if there's going to be a shortage. I would think there would be some kind of shortage. But the price point of the liquid chlorine, tablets, dichlor, calhypo have skyrocketed to a level that has never been seen before in the industry. And so with that in mind, is a saltwater generator a logical step? And should you install one in your pool or have one installed at your pool? And if you're a pool pro, should you be selling these to your clients? And the answer, I think, is yes to a point. I think the closest analogy I can get to this is the electric car. Tesla, of course, makes one of the top selling electric vehicles. And a lot of people gravitate towards buying an electric car. Now, if you ever looked at the price of the Tesla, you're going to realize that, you know, the higher end models, the two higher end models are 90,000 plus as far as a price point. You don't have to get gasoline. And right now, gasoline in California is about 450 or 460 a gallon. So if you do the math, you're never going to pay for that Tesla by fuel savings unless you drive like 50,000 miles a year or something like that. Even then, you may not reach that point because you have to pay for the electricity to charge the car still unless you take it to a charging station all the time. So basically driving an electric car does not save you a dime. It doesn't really do anything to save or make money for you. So you choose to drive an electric car because you like the fact you don't have to get gas, put it in there. Maybe you are saving the environment. 
The point I'm making here is that with a saltwater generator, just like if you were to buy an electric car, there is a higher price point for the saltwater system. I don't know if you can get one for under a thousand installed now. You may be able to get one for twelve hundred installed, but you're going to be looking at fourteen hundred to maybe eighteen hundred for a suitable salt system for your pool, including the installation charge of the system. And then, of course, upwards of two thousand if you need a larger saltwater system. The price is basically based on how much output the cell can do or how many gallons it's rated for. And then, of course, the branding is also part of the price point. And, of course, like everything else, the price of saltwater generators has gone up in 2021. And in 2022, the price point is still elevated. So you're paying more for it now than you were in 2020. So you kind of missed the boat if you didn't have a saltwater generator installed two years ago. And will it offset some of the chemical costs? I think in the past, I've done some podcasts where I compare it to buying a bucket of tablets for $100, which is outdated now because a 50 pound bucket of tablets is closer to 200. And I always would say you'll never reach that tipping point where you'll save money on chemicals to the point where it'll pay for the salt water generator because every four or five years, you got to replace that salt cell. And that costs five to $800, depending on the manufacturer, the gallons rated on that salt cell. So you're not saving any money. You're probably getting a little closer now with the cost of chemicals than you have ever before. However, with the saltwater generator, you're going to use more muriatic acid because it raises the pH just by the nature of the saltwater generator working in the pool. And so you'll spend more on muriatic acid. Of course, no money on chlorine because it's going to generate the chlorine for your pool and you're not going to need algicides or things of that nature in most cases because it'll put a pretty good chlorine level in the pool every day and there will be no need for you to get algicides because the pool won't zero out. It won't form algae. Most of the salt pools on my route never have an algae problem unless something happens to the salt cell and it stops producing and I don't notice it or the customer doesn't notice it. However, in most cases, you don't need to buy those things. So you're going to save money there, but you're going to spend more money on the unit itself and for the salt cell every four or five years. So the money saving aspect doesn't exist with the salt water system, even with the chemical costs being elevated or twice the price they were in 2020. You're not going to save a lot of money with the saltwater generator because it has a built-in kind of expense price point, like buying a Tesla kind of, you know, analogy that I used earlier. So is it time to buy a saltwater generator? I like the convenience factor. I've had a saltwater pool and I've had various saltwater generators on my pool. Right now I'm using the Jandy True Clear and I just got a new cell for it after four years or close to four years. And I find that the True Clear is a really good saltwater generator. And, it, you know, for me, the go for back to chlorine or putting tablets in or using liquid. And this is something I never considered doing because once you go to salt, you probably don't really go back to chlorine. And if CNET is an accurate site to quote this from, if you buy a Tesla, only 18% of owners go back to a gasoline car after they have, a, have had a Tesla. So I think once you go to salt, you're going to get comfortable with it. And you're going to always want to have a salt water generator and you want to repair yours or get a new salt cell to keep it running. Now, as far as some of the other aspects of the saltwater generator that you need to be aware of before you make this decision, and I think everyone needs to make an educated decision, you need to know the pros and cons of everything before you do something. You know, when I was looking for my truck, I read a lot of reviews about the Honda Ridgeline, and I saw the pros and cons, and one of the biggest cons was it's not like a real truck, so turn in your man card, and I really like the fact that it drives like an SUV, by the way. So I did a lot of research. I read tons of articles and, and watched a lot of YouTube videos. But that was a $30,000, you know, purchase I was going to make versus a saltwater system, which is a $1,500 purchase. But you still need to do the research, of course. So I'm going to give you everything you need to know right here so you don't have to go anywhere else to kind of research it. The pros of a saltwater generator and the number one pro and the really only pro is that it adds chlorine to your pool, eliminating the need for you to add chlorine, buy chlorine, and use any kind of algaecide or chlorine shock, you know, anything like that. Usually if the saltwater generator is set up properly and working properly, you won't need to shock your pool. Rare occasions where maybe the cell stops working or you have a gigantic pool party, you may have to shock the pool because there's really no way to increase the output beyond running the pool longer, running the salts out 100%. So that may happen, but generally it'll add chlorine to your pool and eliminate that entirely. 
And to me, I think that's a great benefit, especially if you're a busy person. You don't have time to be checking the chlorine every three or four days. Or if you have a pool route and the customer wants to have that convenience of having always having kind of safe water because the chlorine is always going to be in there, then that's a good selling point for the customer. Some of the drawbacks, and I'll go through the drawbacks, I think, because you need to be aware of these also. The same drawbacks if you were to buy an electric vehicle are probably built into the saltwater system. The first one I mentioned, and I don't want to harp on it too much, but it's the cost of the saltwater generator. And don't be fooled by someone saying that you're going to save money at the pool store when they sell it to you. That's just not the truth. There's no money savings with a saltwater generator. You'll never reach that point where you're going to save money using a saltwater generator because of the fact that the salt cell wears out. Now, be aware that the salt cells are a different price replacement-wise. The Jandy True Clear is probably one of the least expensive because there's no electronics on there. And then you have the Pentair IntelliClor and the new one, drawing a blank, the iClor, I was drawing a blank there. They have all the electronics built into the cell itself. So therefore, logically, that's going to be more expensive to replace. So if you're looking for a system that the cell is going to be less money to replace, I would say the Jandy True Clear and the Hayward Aquarite cell are the top ones to get because the price point of the cell is a lot less to replace. And there are some off-brand salt systems that I recommend like Circuit Pool and I also like the CMP. You can buy the CMP version at Leslie's under the Jacuzzi branding and the CMP cell is really good as far as you can clean it with like a, a plastic stick versus using acid. And that leads me into the next thing is the maintenance of the saltwater system. Is it something that you could just put in and forget about? Definitely not. You have to kind of monitor it. And the setup the first two or three weeks is something they have to tinker with. I got my dad the jacuzzi version, the CMP salt cell. And it took him a good three weeks to get it dialed in to the output, to the pool runtime because he has a variable speed pump and all of that. And so it's not one of those things where you just plug it in and it's going to produce the right amount of chlorine for you. That's just not how it operates. As far as maintenance, the only thing they have to worry about is that the salt cell will develop calcium on the plates, which would cause it to not produce chlorine effectively. And in a lot of cases, it shut down production entirely. So you got to make sure that the cell plates stay clean. And one of the main reasons why I like the JND True Clear in my pool is that the top has a clear plastic. You can actually see the cell plates. You can see the calcium building up on there. And in my area, the calcium here is horrible. I mean, my aerators in my sink, barely any water comes out. I got to change those every couple of years. My shower head is totally caked in calcium. I have the rim in my toilet with the calcium. And so my salt system or my salt cell gets a lot of calcium buildup. So I'm cleaning that uh, True Clear cell every three months, which is pretty much standard in most areas. Three to six months, you're going to take the cell off and clean it. There are a few things you can do to reduce the amount of scale built up in the salt cell. You can use the Arenda SC1000. It's a scale preventative, and this really helps prevent a lot of the scale buildup on the salt cell. You can also add borates to your pool to bring it to 50 parts per million. And the borates do a number of things. Number one is an algestat, so it's going to prevent algae from forming. Number two is a secondary pH buffer. And I mentioned that the saltwater generator will raise the pH in the pool, allowing you to use more or causing you to use more muriatic acid to lower it down. With the borate in there at 50 parts per million, you're not going to have a lot of pH bounce or the pH is not going to go up rapidly. My pool, for example, since I've been testing the Sutro Smart Monitor, I added acid when, on a Sunday when my pH was at 8. I brought it down to 7.5. And with the borates at 50 parts per million, and with my alkalinity at 68 or 70, the pH went from 8 down to 7.5. And then currently, 5 days later, it's at 7.7. .7. So the pH doesn't move drastically with the borate level of 50 parts per million. And I mentioned that I keep my alkalinity at 70 or 80. And that's the primary buffer of pH. And so if you have a saltwater generator, you can keep your alkalinity at 70 or 80 and then add the borates to 50 parts per million. And of course, another benefit of borates in the pool is that you're going to use about 30% less chlorine because it makes the chlorine more effective. I mentioned that's an algestat. And so you can actually dial down the output of your chlorine generator and lower that output, which will in turn reduce the amount of the runtime of the saltwater generator It'll reduce the amount that the pH goes up in your pool. It also extends the life of the salt cell. 
They're rated for various hours, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000 hours of runtime. And so by doing this, you're actually extending the life of the saltwater cell. And so maybe you go from replacing it every four years to replacing it every six years at this point because of the bories at 50 parts per million. And so there is some maintenance required with the salt cell, again, the calcium buildup. So you would just soak it in an acid mixture of water, depending on the manufacturer's recommendation. I think the True Clear is 20 parts water to one part acid. And I mentioned the CMP, Custom Molded Products Cell, which was recently, by the way, purchased by Fluoridra. So you're probably going to see a Jandy version of that cell. You can also get the Jacuzzi version of the CMP at Leslie's, and you would just use a plastic stick to clean the salt plates. There's a big enough gap in between, so no muriatic acid is needed, which is a great benefit for that salt system. Again, that's the CMP or the Jacuzzi version, which I recommend because you don't need to use acid. So it's a much safer and easier way to keep that salt cell clean. And I think that's the brand to go with if you don't want to use acid or deal with harsh chemicals. And I don't want to make this overly complicated. The salt cell usually stays clean for that three to four month period. And then most cells will indicate with a light, like the Pentair will flash red, letting you know that the salt cell has built up. The Aquarite will also have a indicator that the salt cell needs to be clean. So it's gonna let you know. So it's not gonna be like one day you go out there and your pool's making chlorine, the next day it's not without any kind of warning. Most systems will tell you when the salt water system is not working with an indicator light of some sort so you can clean the cell. So it's not rocket science, it's just something you have to be aware of that that's one of the maintenance things of the salt water system that needs to be done. Another thing to be aware of are these white flakes that blow back into the pool. Since the salt cell is the last part on the equipment, so it comes after the filter and after the heater, there's a lot of these problems with these white flakes in areas. Not every area has them, and some salt water cells have produced more white flakes than others, like the Pentair Intellichlor and the Pentair um, Ichlor. For some reason, they produce a lot more white flakes than other systems. And there's a lot of debate on what the white flakes are. I think that they're calcium phosphate. I think with all the phosphates in the water, it reacts with these salt plates and causes these kind of skin flake blowback. There's also actually thick white flakes that blow back into the pool. And this is caused by the cell reversing and the calcium flakes coming off the cell and blowing into your pool. There's a difference between what these flakes look like, but just be aware that this is the byproduct of the saltwater generator. And until someone comes up with some way to trap these white flakes, you may have this problem with your pool and be aware of the fact that there's some debate of what causes it and ways to remove it. In my case, in my area, I think a lot of it is the calcium phosphate. And what I do is I use phosphate remover to reduce the phosphate level down in a saltwater pool. I also turn the runtime down to, you know, 50%, actually the output, sorry, down to 50% to reduce some of this. Some people think that it's just the calcium and having high calcium. And when the cell reverses it, it blows it out in the pool. Bob Lowry, the late Bob Lowry thought that the blowback was from the salt cell heating up because when it when it turns off all that stays all the water is hot and it stays in the cell and that causes a lot of that calcium to come off the cell and then when you turn the pool on it blows into the pool. Who knows exactly who's right? It's probably more than one cause and I think it could be calcium coming off the plates. It could be what Bob Lowry described when the heat of the cell causes that to happen. And he suggests that if you have a variable speed pump, you run your salt cell at, you know, 3,100 RPMs. And then you have a cooling off period where the salt cell turns off for 20 minutes or so. And this can be easily done with a variable speed pump. If you run it less than two, that two, if you run it lower than 2,000 RPMs, the salt water generator is not going to work because the flow meter is going to indicate low flow. And so if you want to do a cooling off period like Bob Lowry suggests, you could run your saltwater generator at 3,100 RPMs or 3,000 RPMs. And then after you're done and you want to give it a cooling off period, have the pump go to 2,000 RPMs for 30 minutes and that'll cool off the salt cell. And that may eliminate the problem. I've done testing with this method. I can't conclusively say if it helps or not, but if you have a pool route with a lot of saltwater generators and variable speed pumps, you can try this method. I personally just like adding the phosphate remover and it, to me it takes all the flakes away or most of them away and reduces them by like 90%. So 
not a major drawback, but something that you really need to be aware of because customers that get these installed or new pool builds see these flakes and they're wondering what's going on with the water and what's why is not why is the pool guy not taking care of it? It's actually just the salt cell and the, the nature of the salt cell that's producing these. And it seems to be more and more prevalent than it has before, mainly because I think there's more and more salt systems out there. And so it's something that's becoming more noticeable in the industry. So again, the question is, should you upgrade to a saltwater system in 2022? My answer to you is if you've been thinking about it and if you are tired of adding chlorine to your pool or if you're a pool pro and you have customers that have been asking you to put a saltwater generator in, you can definitely sell them on that. I guess you can sell them on the benefit also that you're not going to have any harsh chemicals at their house, you know, stored there. And also the fact that the water is softer or feels softer with a saltwater generator. There's all kinds of selling points. I think the best way to sell to a customer on my route is that the convenience factor. Hey, uh, I can put this thing in your pool. It's going to make sure that there's always going to be chlorine produced. You know, I'm there once a week and I can't make sure there's chlorine, but this will make sure there's chlorine there every day, especially if you use your pool a lot. This is great for the kids to make sure there's a good chlorine level when they go swimming. And so Junior or Sally that used to get ear infections because they would swim in a pool with no chlorine, those are going to be things of the past with a saltwater generator. And of course, crank that thing up to five or six parts per million for the customer. That way you know that you're going to have plenty of chlorine going into the pool and if they use their pool a lot. And this is going to be one way just to make sure that your pool is safe to swim in. And it's a really convenient way to add chlorine to your pool. And most people will want to make that switch. You know, my dad had a chlorine pool for many years. He was getting tablets and adding liquid chlorine. And he's, what, 75 now. So I decided to get him a salt cell so that he would not have salt water generators. So he wouldn't have to worry about that. And he loves it. He checks his chemistry like every day. He's one of those kind of old codgers. And he likes to make sure there's plenty of chlorine in the pool. And with a salt water generator, it just eliminates that one thing from the equation. So if you have older parents or you have elderly relatives, having a salt water generator installed is probably something you should consider. And as far as maintenance, I mentioned cleaning the cell, but it's really easy to do. So if they're somewhat handy, they can clean it themselves, or you can hire a pool service company to go over there and maintain it for them. But it's a way to actually make their pool maintenance a lot easier and it's something that you may want to consider for certain situations. Rental properties, I would suggest having a saltwater generator at your pool at a rental property. That way you have a good chlorine level all the time. So there are a lot of practical applications of a saltwater system and a saltwater generator. And I suggest you do the research. And if you decide to get one, it's nothing, there's no real downside of a saltwater generator, just like there's not a huge downside to buying a Tesla if you can afford it. And if you're looking for other podcasts that I recorded, you go to my website, swimmingprolearning.com. On the banner, click on that podcast icon, and you'll see a drop-down menu. In the search box, you can just type in salt, and you can see I've done quite a few podcasts on saltwater generators, troubleshooting, which ones are better than others, and you can refer to that in the podcast site. And if you want to enhance your business, definitely consider my coaching program at poolguycoaching.com. Thanks for listening to this podcast. Have a great week and God bless. Pool Service Pro. Open a Leslie's Wholesale account today and receive wholesale pricing on products you use every day. Leslie's Pool Supply offers convenient locations that are open seven days a week. Another great benefit of opening a Leslie's Wholesale account is Leslie's referral program. Get referred to a customer looking for weekly pool service. Save time and money and grow your pool service route and become a Leslie's Pro.